I thought I'd do a quick update on the IRF 510 based amplifier that I did last week. Uh, this time running it on uh, 40 meters or 7 megahertz. So in this video I'm going to cover the changes uh, that I made between these two uh, running at 7 and 14. Uh, I'm going to show how the output varies between the uh, two using an AM uh, input signal with different drive levels. Uh, and then I'm going to extract the data from uh, the traces on the oscilloscope uh, and then uh, go over to Python, do some envelope detection of the AM signal and look at the uh, audio frequency con content of the demodulated signal. So just a quick note, I did get some of these uh, boards made. Um, well, I've got it upside down there. Um, and uh, I've got a few to give away. Um, unfortunately, US only, uh, international postage does cost uh, quite a bit. Uh, if you're interested, like I said, I've got a few to give away. Uh, just email me your address. And uh, uh, note, these are really only for experiments, uh, experimental purposes. Uh, there's no transmit receive switching in there, so you can't really just hook it up to uh, your radio and off you go. But you can have a bit of fun with it. So anyway, uh, if you're interested and you're in the US, uh, please do uh, send me an email and uh, first three interested will get uh, one of these gratis. So let's just uh, quickly go through the differences between the uh, 14 megahertz and the 7 megahertz. Uh, and uh, firstly, the, uh, the first most obvious difference is the uh, uh, is the low pass filter on the output here. So you can see here, and I've included these in the in the schematic. So here's the various uh, uh, inductors and capacitors for the uh, 40 uh, meter versus the 20 meter. Um, now, one of the things for the, the 20 meter um, filter presents uh, an 8 ohm impedance to the FET. The uh, 7 uh, megahertz uh, filter presents a uh, 14 ohm uh, impedance to the uh, to the FET. That's at least according to the simulations that I did in uh, LT Spice. So just moving back a little bit uh, in the circuit, and, and and all this is pretty much the same between the two, uh, with the one exception of this hundred ohm resistor here. Uh, so this is kind of a stopper resistor that I had to include to uh, prevent oscillations in the circuit, and they were actually quite pronounced at uh, at seven megahertz. So. If you'll recall in the original, uh, the 14 megahertz version, this was a 1K resistor. I had to reduce that to 100 ohms. Um, the only other change is, at least according to the simulations I did in LT Spice, the input impedance of the FET stage uh, was around about uh, 21 ohms at uh, 7 megahertz, as opposed to around about 16 ohms at, uh, at uh, 14 megahertz. So just moving back, um, this uh, interstage transformer here in the 7 megahertz version, it's uh, uh, actually 15 to 7 now. And this guy is uh, 24 to 8 turns. Uh, obviously the uh, input impedance of the various stages uh, drops down, uh, sorry, increases as you uh, go down in frequency. So let's do a quick uh, input comparison uh, just to go through the test setup. I'm injecting a, an AM signal here from the signal generator. I'm going to do it at, at 40 megahertz first, then 7 megahertz. The amplitude is 100 millivolts peak to peak, and the AM depth is 50%. Uh, so we'll be able to see that on the oscilloscope. Uh, so let's uh, get started. Let me just pan over to the oscilloscope so you can see that. And I've got it going through a 50 ohm dummy load, of course, on the output. Um, so let's have a look at that. Okay, so just switching it on here. You can see that signal there. Um, so what we've got is a 28.2 volts peak to peak signal there. You can see that's the, uh, the classic AM uh, looking signal there. Not a lot of distortion on that, so that's... Uh, kind of good. Let's move over to the uh, 7 megahertz and we'll see the same thing. Oh, just one thing I forgot to mention, it is a 1 kilohertz uh, uh, audio signal that uh, we're using to modulate the RF. Okay, so now here's that same input signal at uh, 7 megahertz. Let's just stop that. Um, and as you can see at 7 megahertz with the same 100 millivolt uh, peak-to-peak signal on the input, 
the signal at 7 megahertz is quite distorted. So let me turn down the, uh, the input amplitude. I'm going to go all the way down to uh, 70 millivolts peak to peak. And then let's try that again. And you can see there that uh, signal is a lot less distorted. We have a 42.8 42 volt peak to peak uh, 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 output signal there and uh, a lot less distortion on the, uh, on the input. So definitely getting uh, more output power um, with less input power at 7 megahertz uh, than 14 megahertz. So what I've actually gone and done is I've graphed all the... Um, uh, a, a range of uh, different input uh, uh, signals uh, between around about uh, 50 millivolts peak to peak all the way up to 100 milli 150 millivolts peak to peak. I've captured them on the scope. So let's go over to the computer and uh, we'll graph them in Python and we'll see, uh, we'll do some uh, Fourier analysis on the, uh, on the audio uh, waveforms. Okay, so before we walk uh, through the Python code, uh, here are all the, uh, the files that I've captured here, and I've uh, zipped them up, and I'll include a link to Google Docs where I, I, I put them all. Um, so anyway, uh, so basically, as you can see, there's, they're broken into two sections, 14 megahertz section and a 7 megahertz section, and, and each of the files is denoted with what the peak-to-peak -peak, uh, uh, input signal uh, was uh, for that specific test. Okay, so here's the, uh, here's the code here. Uh, I'll include a, a link to my GitHub repo where all this code is stored. This file that we're looking at, uh, there's a few different ones in the directory there, but this one's irf510-amp-measure. And uh, what this basically does is it reads one of those uh, CSV files that's generated by, from the oscilloscope. That contains uh, a set of data uh, that shows voltage and, uh, voltage and time. Uh, each of these files is about 1.4 million uh, rows, so there's quite a bit of data there. And, and what I basically do is, one of the things that I was uh, kind of looking for, and I kind of found a link for this, and uh, I'll provide a link, is how do we, how, once, if you're given an AM signal, how in Python do you actually compute the envelope? And the answer, after quite a bit of searching, is it's, is it extremely straightforward. There is this Hilbert uh, function that uh, comes out of uh, scipy.signal. Uh, and in scipy.signal, you, uh, you just call Hil Hilbert with the signal. So this signal is just simply the, uh, the voltage uh, signal. Uh, and then you, co you compute the envelope by calling uh, numpy.abs uh, on the analytic signal which comes out of the uh, out of this Hilbert signal call. Okay so let's run that and uh, check out the results. Uh, it doesn't take too long considering it's uh, going over 1.4 million uh, rows there. So here's the uh, here's the output signal so uh, let me just bring the graph up. It's just taking a while to uh, to compute the results here. So here the blue trace is, and this is 1.4 million uh, uh, graphed values. So the blue trace is the original AM signal. The orange trace that you can see right at the top there is uh, the result of running that Hilbert function on there to compute the envelope. So as you can see, it's tracking the uh, AM envelope here quite well. Um, and uh, it took me a while to find this, but uh, two lines of code, I, I, I think that's kind of hard to beat. So now that I've computed the envelope, what I want to do now is basically extract that audio envelope and do some analytics on it. Because what I want to get to is I want to see what the audio uh, harmonics that are, that are in that signal. So not the RF harmonics, but the audio harmonics. So as you can see here, what, what I'm actually doing is, uh, so I've run it through, I've calculated that uh, envelope. I do a bit of smoothing on the envelope. And then what I basically do is, because I've got, this is effectively that the trace is at the uh, RF frequency, 
what I want to do is extract the audio signals at the audio frequency. So that's what this piece of code here is doing, is basically chopping up the RF signal into uh, uh, 44.1 kilohertz samples at the audio frequency. So that's what this piece does. I then calculate the DC component of that audio signal. So as you could see, it's, uh, it's all the way up here. So I've got a, a DC component right up here. I want to get rid of that so I, can, uh, so I can do some processing on it. And so I calculate the DC component, which is the mean of that, uh, of that audio signal. And then I simply subtract the DC component from the, uh, from the uh, audio samples. Now I can actually conduct some uh, Fourier analysis on it to see what uh, other audio harmonic content is in the signal there. And you can see here's the result of that. So what I've basically got here is, uh, so this is the uh, log of the magnitude of the signal down the y-axis, and across the x-axis is the frequency. And you can see it goes from 0 to about 22 kilohertz. Now that's 22 kilohertz, which is half of the sampling rate or the original sampling rate is 44.1 kilohertz. So you can see here, this is that one kilohertz signal right at the, that peak right here. But look at all these harmonics here that is, that is also accompanying the signal. So let's just go back to the data that we were graphing here and you can see that was the seven megahertz signal at 150 millivolts input. So let's try that again, but instead of the 150 millivolts input, let's try that at 60 millivolts uh, input. I'm just going to clear away all these graphs here. We'll run that again. What we should see on this graph is we should see that harmonic content reduced because there's less distortion in the signal. So again, just going through it, here is the... Uh, here is the AM signal together with the, with the graphed envelope that has been calculated. Bear with me. And you can already see there's a lot less distortion in this signal. So moving over to the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Fourier analysis here, you can see there are a lot less, there's still plenty of harmonics there, but there are a lot less of those harmonics in the signal. Okay, so let's uh, finally compare uh, that, uh, do some analysis on the 14 megahertz um, uh, amplifier with 80 millivolts uh, peak to peak on the input. Let's just run that off, take a little while to compute that. Um, and there are those graphs again. Let's just have a quick look at the... Um, yeah, the calculated envelope, and you can see there, there's the calculated envelope. Moving on to the Fourier analysis, and again, this is at the audio frequency, you can see there's even less harmonic content there. You know, and basically, uh, one of the reasons for that is for at 40 megahertz, 80 millivolts peak to peak, that signal, um, the output signal, is way down at... Uh, at uh, 23.2 volts peak to peak on the output side so that's going to produce a lot less distortion in the signal so I hope you found this uh, analysis uh, interesting um, like I said um, before on the boards uh, if you're interested in one of the boards uh, gratis drop me a line I'll, I'll uh, do my best to get one off to you uh, again US only I I can't really afford uh, overseas postage. So hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, that's all for now.